Hey guys, just want to review a product that I have purchased recently on Amazon. It is formerly named the Super Open Gym by NYB on Amazon. And what that really means is to anyone who lifts, it's a half rack with uh, some weight storage and band pegs and a pretty high load capacity. And it's by a company called New York Barbell. And on Amazon, it is priced at $206.45 with free shipping. And that really is what attracted me the most, uh, considering the other units from Rogue are upwards of $400 plus. And um, just thought I would give this one a shot at that price point. I've been using this thing for around two months now, uh, about four times a week, squatting heavy and then squatting uh, speed squats and, and things of that nature. And it's really done well for, for, the, for what it costs. This video is just going to go over some of the aspects of it that I like. Uh, the first one here is the hole spacing, very tight hole spacing for a generic rack such as this, and it is actually numbered as well. So if you have multiple users, um, you can kind of rem remember whose uh, height is what number. Speaking of height, this thing comes in at around 83 inches tall. So if you have a short ceiling in your garage, just be sure to measure. Um, lengthwise, we're at about 49 and a half uh, inches and width also 49 and a half or roughly 49 inches so roughly it's it's a box but what's really important is the usable squatting area for us lifters and that's around 44 and a half to 45 inches as you can see here so those sumo squatters uh, depends on your leg length and things of that nature but you should have no problems everyone's wondering about the shakiness of this rack yes it shakes you can see that here in the video it shakes it's just the nature of anything that is held together by four bolts. There's no triangulation at the bottom. Uh, but it does have a 1,000 pound static load capacity. Here is actually 575 for an example. Just a quick unrack and re-rack. Um, you're able to see that the rack handles it pretty well. There's a drop on the J-cups there. Fine. I mean, there's, there's really no um, extreme shaking there. So what I actually did was I, I'm not using the spotting arms that came with this rack. They're a little short, actually. So if you did miss a squat, there's a chance you'd miss those spotting arms. So I actually went to Spud Inc. and purchased these suspension straps. You commonly see these on monoliths and other uh, higher-end squat racks. But these are, are great tools for catching yourself on the squat. And you don't have to think about trying to hit your spotting arms. So I decided to go with these for just a, a, the safety aspect and kind of peace of mind there. Um, so yeah, I've been really enjoying those. And um, as, as far as accessories go, I've also purchased these Titan T2 dip handles. And on Amazon, they are $55 for the set with free shipping. Really have been enjoying those as well. Just kind of gives you more variety of exercises you can do with the rack. And despite the shakiness of the rack, they actually work quite well. So you can see the solidity here. I actually have used a dip belt in the past as well with up to 200 pounds around the waist. And the squat rack has done just fine. One thing I will mention is that the J-cups here do not have any sort of plastic lining. And if you have a high-end barbell, that might be of a concern to you because of the, the, the knurling actually wearing down on that particular portion of the bar. I'm sure there could be some homemade remedies you could do and, and kind of line it with some rubber or plastic, but that's just one thing to mention. One thing that also is disappointing is that pull-up bar is so painted thick with paint that it's, it's just hard to grab on. It is marketed as a knurled bar. It is knurled, but it just is so slick. Uh, it kind of needs some tape or something on it so you can gr grab onto it. Um, but yet, yeah, as you can see, some chins here. Performs just fine. A little bit of a sway. Uh, you see the rack swaying, but that's just the nature of, as I said, no triangulation. Right here in the shot, you can see if there was a triangulated beam going down toward those band pegs, you would eliminate most all that shake. Here you can see the weight storage pins. Okay, the weight storage pin wasn't a big deal to me. Uh, I have a, a three-tier storage rack, but for those who do look for storage, you can really, as you can see, only fit weight on one or the other pegs and actually not a 45 on the rear pegs as you can see here so 
One thing to keep in mind here is that really if you have a lot of 45s, you can only use one of the pegs. You can, however, fit a 35 on the rear and say a 25 on the side peg, as you can see here. So if you have a lot of chain plates, this could be a good storage solution for you. The weight actually does add to the solidity of the rack. Uh, you can see the bolt holes here to bolt it to the floor. Not really needed if you have weight on the side. You can still use the band pegs and it will hold the squat rack down. When you assemble your rack, be sure to have these bolts with the nuts up because if you have the nuts on the ground, the rack will actually wobble more. Um, the instructions, from what I recall, actually showed the bolt heads up. So this is actually the proper way to install those. You don't want your rack wobbling around. But uh, to wrap the video up, definitely recommend this rack at the price point that it is with free shipping. It was at my doorstep in like three days. And uh, it's just a fraction of the cost of what you can get from someone like Rogue. And if you're an intermediate lifter and you're not squatting in the six or 700 pound range yet, uh, this is perfect. This is all you'll ever need.